Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are presenting these lectures for the TE Fellows Lectures as part of the National Board of ECHO uh, exam preparation uh, for the advanced PTE. So we are going to be talking about uh, 3D imaging and strain uh, today uh, for the 23rd of June 2021. I have uh, no disclosures to discuss with you and, uh, and no conflicts of interest of uh, these lectures is going to be how to obtain a 3D data set uh, on a Philips uh, Equip uh, 7 or on a GE Bibit uh, E9. We are going to see the applications that we can do with those 3D images and we are going to go to understand a little bit about uh, strain. So I recommend you this uh, web page. Uh, this is actually free. It's developed by the University of Toronto from part of the PEC group. Uh, unfortunately, we are updating the, the web page now because it's dependent on flash technology and we are going to try to actually get it updated. But here uh, you can actually go through the 3D DE, as you can see there. And then once you open that, you have all the acquisition modes and manipulations uh, both for the EPIC uh, and the BB the E9. Okay, let's just start. So the acquisition on the Philips EPIC uh, Q7 is the one that we use uh, uh, in most of uh, our cases. So you're going to have your video monitor, you're going to have your touch screen, you're going to have your control panel, okay? And in the module, you're going to be able to get an anatomical 3D mode that you can actually cut and see the structures. The, uh, the echocardiography image generated, uh, the panel, what knobs to use, and the text uh, explaining exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's just start with this. So for the EPIC, uh, the first thing that we need to do before doing 3D is your 2D optimization, okay? We are going to select the focus, which is right here, okay? and then you have it over there. You're going to go up and down and focus on the structure that you want. In this case, if you want the, the mitral valve, it's going to be around here. If you want the LV, so you're going to focus over here to get the best image possible, okay? So now again, you're going to use this knob over here, okay? And then uh, when you have it, you can rotate to the left or to the right. You can see the amount of gain that you are actually getting that recommendation between 50 and 55. Don't over gain, otherwise the image is not going to be good. Once we have set the focus and the gain. Okay, so we go to the different acquisitions modes that we have. We are going to start with the first 3D mode that we have, which is the X-plane, and you have it over there. So. When we start with this, I'm going to show you over there. So it's going to be here in the tactile, which is going to be over there. And then the moment that you do that, you're going to have, for example, from the four chamber view, you're going to generate a 90 degrees forward view. If you start from a 90 degrees view, uh, you will actually go over the 180 and you will get a, a reverse image. There is a recommendation, there is a little function up there on the tactile screen which says uh, right uh, reversal and then you can use that. For example, if you start from the long axis view of the arctic valve here, instead of going 90 degrees forward, which is going to be an inverted image of 45 degrees, you go right invert and then you will get the 45 degrees here. So that's very handy for the mitral valve to have two views, for the aortic valve to have two views, for the LV to have uh, the two views of it. And you can see both views simultaneously. Okay, so those are examples of the acquisition modes. That's explained from LV, from the transgastric uh, short axis view, and then automatically we are uh, getting a 90 degrees view, and it's very easy to actually assess the whole walls uh, in both two views. Same thing if you go to the four chamber view and you get a two chamber view, you can actually do a Simpsons by plane to estimate your uh, ejection fraction. Another example on when to use X plane is for the right ventricle, again from the transgastric uh, RV plane. So you actually cut it, you get 90 degrees, you can see the tricuspid uh, moving towards the septum, and you can see the function of the right ventricle. So regarding the first, uh, the second acquisition mode uh, for 3D on the EPIC, 
we talk about the X-plane, now we are going to talk about Life 3D, okay? The important part of Life 3D, again, is going to be a small size. It's only 30 per 60, which means 60 degrees here, and elevation out from, from ourselves to down there is going to be only 30 degrees. This is the 30 degrees here, okay? It's a real-time one bit, but you can gate for obtain more bits, but it's going to be retrospective and your elevation out planes, okay? So regarding the elevation out planes, and that's what we're going to show here. You can have it in front, where you can see almost anything because you are at the surface of the heart, and by default it's in the center, okay? And then you can have it back, okay? That those are the three possibilities that we have over there. And then the elevational, you can actually do lateral, which is going to give you a wider image. Okay, so you have it over there. Okay, and then you can actually do it by width or by lateral, okay? So once we want to get the image, and that's a perfect example over here, uh, what we normally do when we have one bit, and I'm going to pause it over here, if you only get one bit, uh, you have a, a 60 width, 60 degrees width per 30 degrees elevation now. So when you get this image here in one single bit, you have a line density. So like, imagine that you have 10 cuts of a CT scanner over this image. So that's one bit. So your frequency is not going to be 70, it's going to be much less, okay? The moment that we actually gate, and we go over here to actually determine the, the gating, down there, so you can gate to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 bits. Recommendation as per the American Society of Echo is to go to 4 bits, okay? And then we have it over there, and then uh, at least 4 bits. So when you go there, this line is going to get 1 bit, the next bit is going to get the same thing, but then we are only taking, if you are doing, for example, six bits, we are dividing this image in six. And you get the 10 lines in a six of the image, then the next 10 lines in another six of the image, the next 10 lines in another six of the image, like that. So at the end, you end up having 60 lines instead of 10. So the quality increased dramatically and your heart rate. So the same thing here, the cuts are matched lower and as you can see here as part of the video when you start over here your frequency is only 18 the moment that we go and we trigger to 2 we are increasing to more than 30 hertz and then if I go to 4 again it's 53 and then when I go to 6 which is over here it's up to 70 range okay so just have that in mind and then the elevation all that I wanted to discuss with you, you have uh, the elevation all over here, okay? And that's how much do you want to include from that, depending on what's the structure that you are analyzing. Okay, those are examples of uh, live 3D. So again, 60 degrees by 30, so it's ideal for, for example, like uh, placing catheters, or guiding, not so good for valves because you can actually get the whole valve but the arctic valve is a possibility when you are actually putting a guy wire through it you can use color too with uh, this one is an x8 with a single bit you get up to 16 hertz in color it's recommended to go up to 15 hertz or more that will never happen with an x7 and you will need to actually get to get a, 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 a proper image so have this course to explain the live 3D and we are going to go with the full volume, okay? With the full volume, first thing that you will notice is the sector goes to 90 of width and then elevation is going to go, to go up to 92. So this is for volume, like the recommendation for full volume is mostly like for big ventricles, like the right ventricle of the left ventricle ideally, okay? It's one bit, but you can always gate, okay? And because it's so huge, your uh, frequency is going to actually be decreased compared to the light 3D, okay? So again, we are going to be able to maximize up to 120 with one, and those nodes are going to be here when you go over there, okay? And you see 
the, the loops that we are going to go. So let's just start with this, okay? So we go to the four chamber view. You select the full volume, and the full volume is going to be here. When you press, you get automatically a four chamber view, and then the view of the elevation view, which is uh, the equivalent to the two chamber view here, you generate this view over here. And again, if you work with the elevation or width, so you can actually increase the size of what you are doing, okay? Or decrease the size, depending on the structure. And you can go from side to side, from, from uh, up to down. And then you optimize your image as much as you want with that. Okay, next thing. If we beat and we decide to actually increase our quality, again, let's just hold it here and we have it there. So we start like that. We are at one bit. That's nine Earth, your frequency, much lower than the light 3D mode, okay? And then uh, the moment that we go to two bits, just over here, we see how this increase. The same thing happened when we go to the four bits. A little bit more, which is here, and then six bits, which is your maximum, okay? Which is the recommendation. Problem with that is the stitch artifact that you can actually generate. Those are examples of uh, LB full volume. Again, when you have those three images, you can go to the tactile uh, screen and then select only this image here if you want. I normally recommend you to have this so you know you're not foreshortening your uh, left ventricle. For example, a little bit here, you can actually increment your, your size here. And then you will be able to generate an image like that. And then going through the 3QA advance, so you are able to generate uh, a 3D ejection fraction of the left ventricle. Another example is for the right ventricle. The software is not designed for the right ventricle. You can make a similar assessment for the right ventricle and choose generate by a strain your uh, fraction area change. And you can actually get here an estimation of the EF, but this is not validated by the guidelines. Another example of full volume, ideally, is when you want to actually assess a valve uh, that is leaking and you want to assess the regurgitation. The recommendation is to go to full volume, which is going to provide the, the best definition. And then, same principle, you start with a, just a simple, like a full volume view, and then you actually place color on the image and automatically I would recommend you always when you do that to go up to six bits and you can see here this is a x7 and it's basically generating 12 thirds so you need six bits to generate 12 thirds with with the x8 probe you were able to generate 16 thirds with a single bit so that's part of the of the quality and with that you can actually measure your vena contracta area here and up to here using multiplane reconstruction with uh, uh, QLab. So 3D full volume, again, four chamber. You don't really, if you are interested in the LB, I will focus on the LB. I will take off the screen this. So the more tissue that you take, the less good is going to be your image. But this is just as a purpose to showing you how that works. So we are getting almost the four structures here, the four chambers and the two valves transpid and mitral. So again, remember the picture that is showing you is removing this part from here so you can see the heart and we got this four chamber view here removing the part that you have there. So this is seen from here down okay and then when we have it here, and that's the image that we are going to be able to generate. So you go here, you select on the tactile screen only this, you put the track down, so you are seeing it from there, you reset your crop, which is here, and then by resetting this, you are adding this P 
piece here, so the anterior part, and then what you got, that's the view that we were getting. So you were only seeing the heart from here, and then what we generate, okay, your tachycardia, your mitral, your pulmonic, and your aortic, and you can see the four valves from the atriums into the ventricles, okay? So go there, select from the three icons only one, which is the 3D image, um, use the trackball, bring it down, so you are looking from the atriums now, and then rotate until you put this with the aortic valve looking north, and then you can actually orient yourself and get the whole structures of the heart. Okay, the last uh, 3D mode that we have in the Philips is the 3D zoom. It's very recommended for mitral or tricuspid valve. You can use it for the aortic valve too. Okay, so you go there, that's the 3D zoom. You press, you have a region of interest. Just pressing the trackball with the left side uh, knob, you can actually move the position of the box or reduce the size. So position and size, and then you use the trackball to actually do that. And then you have to click knobs here, and the the action that you are making should actually be prompted here under the screen. Okay. So. So this is an example of a 3D zoom of an aortic valve, which is ideal, for example, in this, in this case, a bicuspid uh, valve, which uh, has a little roughly between the left and the right coronary cusp. And we know that because this is the intraatrial septum. Okay, so we know this is the non-coronary cusp, this is the right and this is the left. You can put color on it. And this is actually taken from here, okay? So you got, this is taken from the long axis, automatically generates a short axis view and the view here, and then you can use and manipulate the image that you are getting. To understand a little bit better the 3D zoom, okay, we already talked about this little structure here. So what we are going to generate, okay, is this little sector here. And we have it. Okay, the moment that we have it, this is for the front chamber. This is the elevational width. How much we are taking, I recommend you to take the whole. So increase your elevational up to getting everything. Normally it's recommended to get up to the left atrial appendix. So you can orient yourself. And then when you see it, you are trying to get this view here with the aortic valve on top. So how do we do that? So recommendation when we do this is you are going to get just the image of the of the mitral valve from the side. So you track down your ball, you rotate set, you put it up, and then you have your aortic valve on top, and you generate this view of the mitral valve, left atrial appendix, tricuspid, and pulmonic. And in this case specifically, I think everyone can see here that there is a little prolapse on P2, and those are the scallops of the mitral valve when we are using 3D zoom. So that was the introduction for the Felix Epic uh, 7. So now we are going to talk a little bit on how to manage the GBB E9. It's not the last model, like, uh, but it's the one that we have uh, as backup in the OR. So I think it's important for you to know how to do it. So, and again, that's how the console looks like, the video monitor. This is like the tactile screen, and then you have your knobs uh, and panel control over here and the module is going to be explained in the same way okay so the first thing we are going to do the, the same exactly the same thing okay whenever we are doing a 3d image with the g exactly the same optimize your focus optimize your gain so here is where you're going to find the focus and you have it there focus on the mitral focus on the lv focus on the tachyspid wherever you want to go and then when you're going to actually go to the gain is the 2D knob here. And then you can actually increase to the right, to the left, to know how much you are actually getting there, okay? So the next thing 
is the first mode. So this is called MultiD, which is the equivalent to the X plane in Philips. Okay. So let's just go ahead. I just did a little video on how to do that. So we have it there, MultiD. You have the knob, and again, 90, 90 degrees from the four chamber view, anterior, inferior wall, and then you generate this. Ideally, recommended for uh, uh, guidance for catheter placements or like just to see both uh, both uh, views of the left ventricle uh, simultaneously or of the mitral valve of the aortic valve. But most of this uh, technology is used for for advancing catheters, mitral clips. Okay. Those are examples of multi-D, of the right ventricle using the GE machine. And now the second uh, 3D mode that we can use in the GE is the bird side. So again, it's a little bit different. That will be probably the equivalent to the, um, the, equivalent to the uh, live 3D. Uh, the, the size of the 3D data set that we are going to generate is, as, is as small, it's very small, uh, but it has only 10 uh, degrees of elevational width, which uh, it gives you like high spatial and temporal resolution. That's, uh, that's good. It's normally made for one bit acquisition and you can actually have the elevational plane on the front, on the center or on the back of the heart, depending on what do you want to do. So for the bird's eye, the problem is it's so thin that normally, like whenever you go more, more deep than 10 degrees from your image, from your pyramid uh, block, you are not able to actually uh, be able to see a catheter or anything. And then the yellow arrow is showing you where, are, where you are actually looking at and from where. And again, the elevation arm can be center and then you have back, front, and if none of those are selected by default, it's centered, okay? And you have it there, the same thing. And you see how the image changes depending on, on, on what you are pressing here. So another important thing, and we are going to watch it now from those modes, it's the mode TV. Uh, button so when you press it we are going to gate so instead of one bit you're going to go to two to six bits and then the quality of the image actually increases but again the same problem that we will have those second third and four bits are going to be retrospectively acquired and uh, despite that you increase your frame rate the, the main problem that you're going to face is the possibility of a stitched artifact so you always need to actually switch off the vent uh, before doing that and you definitely need uh, the patient to be still if you can uh, switch off the, the, the vent uh, on, on, and then be sure that the surgeon is not moving the patient. Those are examples of beard tie. So you see it's only like 10 degrees of elevation on here, of elevation, only 10 degrees and up to 50 instead of 30, okay? That's our right ventricle. So the next mode is the medium large volume. So this will be the equivalent to the full volume. But the advantage is like medium is a little decreased sector, which is the example that we are going to put here. It's uh, 35 per 35 and the large is 60 per 60. While in the Philips, the large is 90 per 90. So let me just play the video here so you guys can see how that works. medium volume or large volume is going to be selected. In this case, we select medium, so it's going to be 35 per 35, and you see that you, bur you barely can see the, the mitral valve with those volumes, okay? The moment that you select the large, so the mitral valve is coming in view because it's 60 per 60, which is more appropriate. Maybe the aortic valve 35 or 35, you can actually do it. And then again with this function, which is the, the, the elevational, so you can actually increase how much you want to actually increase your image, okay? And again, once you get the image, you can always bit and acquire retrospectively 
up to four bits, a minimum of four bits, which is the recommendation, okay, to increase the quality of your image. And you see how this image is much better with four bits than the one that we were getting with one bit before. Okay, those are examples of medium volume acquisitions, as I was telling you, 35 per 35 is normally better to actually catch, uh, it's, it's, it's compatible to being able to actually get the whole aortic valve in view. Uh, you can even do, like, depending on the software that you have in your GE, uh, you can definitely do the, the, the calculation of the root. I don't think how, how important is that for us, because it's measuring is measuring it in, in mid-systole and we know like the, the root, the, the LVOT diameter and the annulus is in mid-systole but the, the uh, sinotubular junction, uh, sinus of Valsalva and, uh, and, and the ascending aorta needs to be measured in, in diastole. So you can generate this model and you can generate an area. So I think this is important for like if you are doing a tabby to assess the area in, in real time. But uh, other than that, I don't see any other, other functionality. So when you go to a larger volume, it's normally recommended to get the whole left ventricle inside. And again, you will actually be able to generate a 3D EF with the end diastolic and systolic stroke volume and cardiac output too. So if you use the right ventricle, uh, G has a contract with uh, TomTech, so you can generate with this package uh, uh, automatically in 30 seconds, just positioning here, 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 and some other views that are a little bit different from over there. So you can generate this model here, and you will automatically get uh, your TAPSI, your fraction, your change, your ejection fraction, and your, um, your end diastolic and systolic volumes plus the dimensions, which is very handy. But again, Philips has uh, purchased uh, Tomtex, so probably we are going to be seeing that in the new Philips machine uh, very soon. So we have discussed uh, the Multi-D, the bird's view, the medium to large volumes, and then the 4D. So the 4D is going to be the equivalent to the uh, 3D zoom uh, from Philips, okay, and basically uh, what it's going to do, you go there, you have a 3D preparation and it's basically the same thing. Region of interest, you select the size and the position of it. And then when you're happy with the position, always we are going to be seeing it from here. So I recommend to go as close to the valve as you can, including those things. Up to here and up to here, so you can orient yourself a little bit. And then once you are happy with it, you can actually see, so size and position, okay? And then once you're happy, the thing that you can generate is something like that okay so this again the arrow indicates where are you seeing this okay monitor valve left lateral appendix or the valve on top you can use the same thing with color a little bit different compared to the Philips but basically the, the same the same objective okay so what can we do with those uh, three things so some examples so for example, it's important you go for a tabular, as we can see in the example here, you can measure the annulus of the aortic valve in mid-systole. You can use your X-plane to be sure that you are cutting because the annulus should be measured where? So it should be measured here, okay? So as we know, this is the non-coronary, the right and the left. So between the non and the left, 
in the middle and in the middle of the RCA, that's where you should actually measure. So probably this, this using explain, you know for sure where you are cutting. Here is a guess because it's 2D. When you can go there, do multiplane reconstruction. So you take a 3D image of this, you go to uh, 3D Q, and then here you measure and automatically it will give you the diameter by 3D or it will give you the LBOT area directly for example for calculations of uh, aortic valve stenosis another example is the possibility of doing uh, planimetry of the mitral valve to estimate mitral valve stenosis uh, level 1 indication is to do it by pressure half time of planimetry when it's a lot of calculation pressure half time is uh, it's it's probably the best uh, the best option, but if you have concomitant moderate uh, arterial regurgitation or severe, uh, it's not accurate. So then you can go to get a three D image of the mitral valve, go on multiplane reconstruction, green, red, and blue plane, and then trace the area, and this is uh, compatible with uh, severe mitral stenosis. Another thing that is commonly used is for an ASD, so you can go there, you can see the color, you can do the multiplane reconstruction again, measure the size, and then get an accuracy, with accuracy, what is going to be the shape and the distance of this area to actually select which amplexer device is going to be better to actually close this um, ASD. So, we are going to finish the, the 3D lecture with a 3D strain. So again, I recommend you to go to the American Society of Echo Beginner's Guide to Strain, uh, which uh, was actually from one of the meetings that uh, I actually attended uh, in Echo, in, in the Echo uh, classes from the ASC. So basically, what is a strain? So a strain is the deformation from an applied force. Uh, you have here a very good example, okay, and the definition of a strain is going to be so between the length at a given point in time, which is your L1, okay, and the baseline of length. So if you have your heart, which is when we start, and then with systole it gets smaller, so what we are going to do is we are going to get this dimension, and I'm going to put an example, imagine this is 5 centimeters, and this is the standard one, which is 10 centimeters. So you are at 10 centimeters, you go to systole, and then you compress it up to 5 centimeters, so 5 minus 10 divided by 10, which is the original distance, which gives you a 50% uh, decrease. Okay. So to understand this better, it's how do we measure this? So we are measuring by a speck of tracking. So you go, you take a small section of the myocardium, and you have it there, and you take a speckle here. So the speckle goes between systole and diastole, and it moves from one place to the other. So the machine calculates from one to the other, so you have the two, and then it moves, and it moves, and it calculates how much it moves. So types of strain, we have longitudinal, that's the one that we are always going to be assessing in our echo machine. You have circumferential, and you have radial. We are only assessing the longitudinal because it's the one that is associated with the uh, outcomes in cardiac surgery and in uh, cardiac patients. Circumferential and radial. So longitudinal, so it goes from up, and I'm going to post this here. So you have a starting, and then when you, systole, when you get on systole, so it gets a shrink. So it's shortening. So the longitudinal strain is always going to be negative, okay? The more negative, the better. So the circumferential strain, which we have here, okay, so that's the one that is sparingly coming down as you compress, and then it's how it goes smaller when you go down. So this one actually is going to be negative 2 during systole, and it's always going to be measured in systole. And the last one is the radial, which is positive because during contraction it's going to be thickening normal values. The important one that you need to remember is anything more negative than minus 20 is going to be normal. Anything that is uh, bigger than minus 20, minus 10, minus 5 is going to be abnormal, okay? 
circumference and radial has different values, but the ones that we are going to be measuring here is the longitudinal strain, okay? Okay, so first thing, if you want with the Phillips uh, and the LV function, you have the four chamber view, the two chamber view, and the long axis view of the RT valve. So you include the whole left ventricle, you focus on that. You have a little square here that I want you to select. Once you have acquire image, acquire image, acquire image, so you freeze, you select, 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 then you go to the chamber motion quantification on the tactile screen, and then after that, you go there and you place your points. So they are going to ask you for the mitral valve base and then the apex. Same thing here and here, same thing here and here. You will go one by one, okay? In the order that you have select those little squares here. So normally it starts AP, apical 4, which is the equivalent for us, which is the four chamber view for TE. So you select there, okay? And you have it there. The AP2, which is the apical 2, and then you have AP3. And then remember, the marker here don't go from the base of the marrow because then you will include the aortic cannula. You need to go to the base of the septum, okay? Once you get the three of them, you accept, 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 accept. And then you will go to go global results that is going to be on the top of the screen and looks for the bullseye. So when you do... is, for example, that's a four chamber view, so you generate it, you put here, here, and here your markers, you accept, and then it's giving you a minus 20.3%, okay, which is the average. So this is the peak segment and strain image of the four chamber view, okay, which uh, the machine is going to call it AP4, and then this is the color encoded region of interest. And automatically this gives you an ejection fraction and diastolic and then systolic volume, okay? This is an example of a strain in the two chamber view. So pointer here, pointing here, pointing here, and then you click, it will give you that and automatically accept if you're happy with the tracing and then you have minus 27%, and again, and diastolic and systolic and ejection fraction. So here, okay, so this is diastole, this is systole, so the segment should shrink and get more, the more shrink it gets, the better. If you start to see segments that come up here up during systole, those are um, dyskinetics and not shrinking, on the opposite, they are actually uh, getting longer. So th this is another way of actually assessing your strain here. This is an example of uh, a long axis view strain, okay? And then you have it here. And when you finish and you do the three of them, you go to global results. And what happens is this. So you will generate automatically an ejection fraction by by plane. You can see the whole 17 segments Red is good, red means shrink, and then you have the classification here. Blue is bad, blue means that less is shrinking and even increasing in size. And then you get by biplane 76.1% uh, in this case. This is a normal case of a strain, that there are normal cases of a strain. As you can see here, all these segments, they suppose in diastole to be up here, the maximum diameter, and then decrease and then increase and as you can see in both examples here here and here they are all over the place you can see a lot of blue because instead of actually shrinking um, instead of going actually smaller they actually go up during systole which uh, when you go to the results and you have it here 42 percent 42.4 and then you go to global results, and as you can see here, all these sections here in systole, they are actually increasing inside, they are this kinetic. Same thing in the little tip of the apex, and the only working sections are probably over here, here, a little bit over here. So, right ventricle. So, the thing with the right ventricle is that the strain is defined, is actually designed by, for the LV, but there are validation of uh, 
there are validations of the of the right ventricle or the left ventricle strain used for RV. There are many many papers on that. So you go to the modify for for chamber, okay? And I'm going to show you which one it is, and then you go to chamber motion quantification again. So for chamber, you tilt the probe towards the right of the patient. You generate an image like that, and then once you get a good image with no stitching, so you acquire the image, you freeze. You select the image afterwards and you go to chamber motion quantification. Once you're there, you select AP3. It's the one that works better to recognize the right ventricle rather than MP AP4, which is the four chamber, okay? And you place the markers. When you place the markers, you have there, there. Normally, you're going to generate something like that. As you can see, this normally is a little bit more. And then you need to adjust this. You can actually click here on those points and bring them a little bit more interior and then you can actually click here and make this thinner so the recommendation is to take the this at the level of the endocardium and not increase not make it very big so you want to actually just take the myocardium if you can over there with the endocardium in those lines so once you have it over there you accept and once you accept you get something like that in this case you're going to get the six segments the recommendation is not to take the interventricular, uh, uh, interventricular septum uh, because it's mostly related to LV function. So what you can go here is when you go here, you press the right knob of the trackball and then it will automatically give you an, uh, a known value and then you can actually just focus on those trees. But then the percentage is not going to show up here because it's designed to actually get it from the six segments. You will need to do it manually. So this has an R.84 uh, agreement with MRI for function and for predicted outcomes. And it's well validated. So So when we use the GE strain, what we are going to find is we have the modify for chamber again. So you select the, the same picture that you were able to get. You acquire the image, then you select the image. And the next thing that we are going to go is go to measures and go to AFI, which is automated function imaging. When you go to AFI, you go to the, you go to the long parasternal, uh, long parasternal axis. And then once you get it over there, um, you have select this point, this point here, and this point here. Well, you have it there, you place the points, and then you wait, and automatically the machine will actually take two, three seconds, so you need to be patient. And then after that's done, what is going to generate is this. Okay, this is the color encoder region of interest. This is the pixel mental strain and it's going to give you that and again you're going to get a value here it's from the sixth segment you want only pay attention to those to those um, three areas here okay and then the segmental region of strain curves again the same systole all the segments coming down and down and then you are able to generate a curve anatomical color and mode too So that was the lecture for today and uh, I hope you guys uh, um, have enjoyed it and if you have any questions feel free to actually send me an email or just text me. I will be happy to answer your, your questions. Thanks. Bye.